na chine ke nanke pro mi hene ina onyo ko na ni ana zopota onyo ko na ni ya bo ku ya ni na bu ye na amen anyi we na ase eze bu pede nkosi na ro tuto na e jamma na nsopuru site na ebige bi maru na ebige ise 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 Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. And remember, if you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia, or any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contribution. Please, each time you watch my video, go to the comment section and put down your comments. That's it. That's, there's, there's really nothing to it. Nigerians are already on red alert about insecurity in our country. Uh, it's not new. Um, I don't know how many families go to bed really relaxed. So we're all on red alert. And um, these orders, maybe for some people, it, it uh, renews their confidence. Uh, we can't... Uh, make the others enough as it were but beyond all of the talking what we expect is that there should be genuine policing across the country there should be genuine policing it's one thing to say it's another to actually enforce we've known about how successive inspector general of uh, inspectors general of police have repeatedly uh, make, made pronouncements about recalling uh, most of the police personnel who are attached to VIPs. And um, we know already that even the, given the number of our police, we are way short of adequate. And yet, more than 30% of these people are posted to VIPs. So there really needs to be some serious... Uh, re, uh, readjustments because if you are saying that uh, you are posting police to schools, hospitals and all, for the optics yeah, it looks good, but how many police people are we posting when the bulk of them actually repeatedly are posted to VIPs? I had the first PPRO yesterday uh, during an interview on another television station where it was uh, trying to justify why they cannot withdraw uh, VIPs from certain classes of people. Yeah, it made sense. Why they cannot withdraw police? Some, yes, the police from some VIPs. Yes. It made sense to an extent because, yes, there are really politically exposed people. There are really people who are in genuine need of that for protection. However, we also know that ordinary people who have the money to afford police personnel are also posted to them. I can tell you for free that mm -hmm. a lot of uh, developers, estate developers across Abuja, use lots of these policemen who are attached to them to do a lot of atrocious illegalities in Abuja. And they are not in any way to qualify as VIPs worthy of police. We are talking about recruitment. There's need to recruit more people into the police force. However, the few that we have, and remember it's about, uh, it's meant to be, is it about 450 by United Nations standard to one policeman, 450 citizens or thereabout to one policeman. It's a far cry in Nigeria, yet more than 30% of the police that is in short supply are given to so-called VIPs because beyond the VIPs are ordinary people who want to wield power, influence to commit a lot of illegalities. We see them every day. There are a lot of these developers, as I say, have them. So it's good to talk tough, but we must balance the empty rhetoric with concrete action if our interest is actually to secure mm. the Nigerian citizenry. Uh, we are all equal before the law. We are all entitled to safety. And the number one mandate of every government is actually for the protection of lives and property 
of yeah. its citizenry. Mm. All right, uh, let's look at, um, th there's a lot of story of, um, I think, two different reports, actually, um, of um, NDLEA's war against um, drug traffickers. Um, I think one, was it in Ingu, who um, excreted 77 wraps of cocaine. And then there was also, um, you know, the, uh, the meth that was found in the heads of smoked catfish that were headed, I think, to what... I can't remember what country, but headed out of the country. And, and I just want us to quickly look at that. Um, NDLEA has been at war with drug barons and, and, and traffickers a lot. And it also shows, or it seems to show, that they're not abating. Because every other day we hear of these kind of reports. Yeah, uh, it's really worrisome. But um, it's worthy to commend... Um, the NDLA, the under the the reinvigorated NDLA under Bubamarua. Before now, we really didn't have a lot of this to talk about, and um, you would see, for instance, that under Bubamarua, we've had the drug bust mm. that involved the uh, Abakiari. Mm. Okay, now that's on one hand. There's a lot being done, and they are telling the stories they are exposing uh, typically before his, uh, his appointment stories had it and you could even justify it with the kind of uh, recording, video recording of Abba Kari and where they were negotiating about how to deal with uh, dispense with some of the drugs and all that that officials of NDLA also collude Mm -hmm. When they get some of these things, they declare less than what they get. And we could see the drama go that mm. went on with Abakiari. So we know that um, Buba Marwa has demonstrated the fact that when the head is good, mm. every other part of the body becomes well because it's done a lot to reinvigorate uh, NDLEA. However, while we are catching all those people who are exporting drugs and those who are importing and, uh, drugs, we have an existential threat within our society. The consumption of drugs. Before now, Nigeria used to be more of a trafficker nation mm, than consuming, consume, yeah. consumption nation. But we are now really deep on it in consumption. And in Abuja, for instance, uh, because as you commend NDLA, you also need to call them out in terms of their uh, seeming looking the other, seemingly looking the other side, looking away when it comes to people who are dealing with drugs for consumers, mm -hmm. especially within Abuja. It's well documented that they will say to access. If you drive a fine car around that environment and you stop, People who will come and offer you drugs, tell mm. you the various drugs they have for sale in case you want, are all over the place. So let me, we need to really find out, you know, why there is so much uh, illicit drug in circulation and why uh, Nigerians, particularly young people, have cravings uh, for consumption of illicit drugs. Uh, you also know that there is, we can establish a nexus between, uh, you know, drug consumption, illicit drug consumption, mm. And of course, that uh, the security crisis you know we are experiencing yeah. in this country. So beyond you know intercepting and arresting uh, those you know who are in possession of these illicit drugs, what more you know can we do to address the underlying challenges uh, behind you know this kind of uh, bad behavior habits? Yeah, I think um, as I would always say, education is a vaccine. Remember, yeah. at some point when we were having issues with. Uh, cough syrup, a codeine, codeine uh, list, cough syrups, what did government do? Even civil society, they were engaged in a lot of advocacy, a lot of education, drawing attention to the menace of that. Um, we need to do more in terms of re-educating especially the youthful class. There are lots of people, of course, they didn't just pick the habit from nowhere. They also saw people around them who also got engaged. I remember um, lots of people 
try to do a lot of escapism. Nigeria is so hard and all that, and people are looking for something to distract them, take them off the reality of the time. However, if it's that hard, it's not easy also to afford to procure such drugs. Uh, we are United um, WHO, World Health Organization, last year came out with a statistics that about uh, 50 million Nigerians were having one form of mental health challenge or the other. Now, if that is, in my view, it's even underestimated. In my oh. view, I really do think that uh, the WHO was cautious enough not to really alarm yeah. us with the figures. I think oh. it's a lot more because a uh, mental health challenge manifest in different forms when you see our poly politicians uh and when you see our politicians because <laughs> i don't think what we have is politicians when you see our politicians um or people in public office still the kind of money that they steal monies that four generations of their lineage will not be able to finish spending stealing what they do not need it's a form of mental health definitely a form of mental health when you also have it the nsitf unable to account for 17 billion and give us that hula balu story that um termites at the vouchers you know that there is mental health point so 17.153 billion you know uh, you know there is a mental health situation going because is it, really of, is it really a case of mental no, health no or, if you are not or sick. the fact that you know some persons are just greedy no okay greed mm, then we yeah. should call greed mental health because if you steal what you don't need i remember in the uh words of uh, late uh Ty, dr Tai Solari of blessed memory he said, uh, uh, what's it called? He said, the ordinary person steals out of need. Mm -hmm. Okay, not justifying it, but he said, the ordinary person, the poor man steals out of need. The public office holder steals out of greed. And let's get a clinical psychologist and co-engaged. It's a form of kleptomania is mental health. Mm. So if you don't need, you are stealing more than you even need, it's kleptomania because you don't need it. So it's mental health. Lots of people have mental health. And that's why I subscribe to the argument that beyond saying for police personnel, military personnel, before you can give them guns, continually do mental health check, continually, periodically do it. I also think that for people aspiring into political office as leaders of Nigeria, if we are going to get it right, then we also need to make sure that mental health evaluation is done. Because how do you explain people still in Nigeria blind? And because the law is so weak in that if by accident you commit, you, you take the life of someone accidentally, whether you are driving and you take the life, you go for some time in prison. However, somebody steals Nigeria blind. The law says it is ordinarily a billable offense. And that is why we have situations where uh, an accountant general of the Federation who was accused, he still remains innocent until proven guilty. Mm. But what did he do? A few weeks after his arraignment, he sought bail, bail granted, and we go back to the same, the same roller coaster as though Nigeria is a joke. We need to rise up as a people. We need to continue to, you know, get the right people in place. And how do you get the right people in place? Today, we have a, a Nigeria that has a reawakening in terms of citizens' participation mm -hmm in the political process mm. and you can see all of the excitement that is the reason lots of people went out okay to try to get their pvcs and that's the reason we cannot ignore the fact that Serap and some other persons are saying 
INEC, you need to do more than you are doing. Mm. Say so allow 7 million Nigerians yes. complete okay. voter you, registration. You see, the argument by INEC is tenable that we need to shut down at some point, point in order yeah. to get it right. So, yes, there must be an end to the process. However, so long as it is documented that about 10 million Nigerians had started the process, INEC is saying the process was not concluded. But the 7,000 uh, and 7 mm. point something million mm. that have not been completed, INEC must open the window, the window to allow them to complete, to complete, to complete, to complete yeah. the process. Mm. There shouldn't be an opening for new because we really must also be pragmatic and helpful and considerate. Mm. So let's have the 7 million, and that's why we must commence a wrap and all those involved in putting a lot of pressure, pressure to make sure the real thing is done. Mm. And we continue to say, what is, what is, it's not rocket science, issuance of PVC. The other day I went to a bank, I had lost my ATM card. I went to a bank and within a matter of, it was the first time they were introducing the machine to me. Mm. I didn't need to interact with any human being. An AI machine was there and I keyed in, what, why do you want a new ATM? lost, damaged, blah, blah, blah. And within less than two minutes, I was able to process my ATM card that has everything. So we've spent a lot of money, too, on INEC. A lot of funds have been INEC spent. Also so improve. INEC must it's, also wake up yeah. and give us the best there is. Yes, the electoral process has improved. And because the electoral process has improved, by the way of the amendments and continuing amendment of the electoral law, there is a need that's why there is a renewed interest especially of the nigerian youth mm -hmm. who have found some level of belief in the process that their votes may count more than it had always counted mm. so now they want to have the right to vote i cannot disenfranchise seven million people who did not complete the process not due to their own fault but as far as i'm concerned due to whatever bureaucraties that mm. INEC introduced, yeah. and they have a duty to make sure that... One other argument is that, you know, these 7 million people we are talking about were unable to complete their registration, uh, the registration process, you know, rather had a window of about one year to do so, but did not uh, do so. And not, INEC has to prepare let's, for let's, the it, next election. That's, that's simplistic. Mm. That's simplistic because if the banks close, let's say, operation at 4 p.m., if you get into the bank by one minute to 4 p.m. You'll complete your transaction. You will complete your transaction. Mm. So they are already in the banking hall. They've even filled their vouchers or their tellers to transact. That is the situation with INEC. So they must complete their transaction. Mm. INEC right. has no choice when it comes to that. But Let to open it to others, no, I understand and I agree that yeah, we time. must also be considerate and help them do the right thing. Let me, I want to go back to um, the issue of insecurity. You know, a lot of times we see um, the media and journalists are accused by federal government and, and, and some other, uh, you know, security experts that maybe we give too much attention to what the terrorists um, are doing and, uh, you know, there's nothing the terrorists like more than um, media, um, reports about the activities. It, it, it's, it's like fuel for them to do what, what they do and that um, the efforts of the military is not as reported as that of the uh, um, terrorists. However, media is doing its job by reporting what happens. So now it will seem as if the military is about now getting um, you know, into the limelight by reporting some of its activities. I'm seeing a lot more being reported than the military had been reported. And this is stemming from the last meeting with the security chiefs with President Mamadou Buhari, where he said, go all out, do whatever it takes. You know, this time, go take the offensive to these people. And so, of course, the latest report being that the military, the Nigerian Air Force, is, is bombarding Kaduna, um, Niger State, and a lot of Terrorists have been killed. Some others, uh, you know, have surrendered last week. I think over about 200 of them, um, you know, surrendered um, after a particular um, offensive by the Nigerian military. I know we still have a long way to go. 
Should we see more of the efforts of the military in the news? Okay, um, I'm documented to have repeatedly said we have the best armed forces, one of the best in Africa. Arguably, uh, the Nigerian armed forces have always distinguished themselves in international operations. And we repeatedly said the reason they have not been able to deal decisively with this insurgency has been put by me, for instance, mm. the, the box stops on the president and commander-in-chief's table that the political will has been lacking. In the last two weeks since the president coming under the threat of impeachment, even though I continue to say it's a lame threat, but of course not good for the optics. Mm. So the president woke up to his responsibility after seven years. And for the first time, he said, you are unfettered. Go, operate, and deal with them. And that confidence we have reposed in the military over the years was justified with the operations they've been having. Uh, we need to also know that as much as there is always pressure, the, the media always takes the beating. Mm. The media always takes the beating. Yeah. Um, a politician loose-mouthedly speaks and runs into trouble when it's reported and he says i was misquoted and yet you have it's because that we are seeing mr abdurov are you saying uh, that ansaru has taken a foothold essentially they are in charge of those areas because if they are patrolling in military fatigue then it would speak a lot about just how much free hand they have to move are you saying they are in charge of those communities definitely they are in charge if you go from Maganda in Bernungwari local government to old Bernungwari up to Fontua, you will see these people. And even if you have a problem and your vehicle break down, these people will come to your head, will help you to jack up your car, remove the tire, take it to a vulcanizer in a nearby village, and also come and fix it. And even some of them will give you water and they will tell you bye-bye. They will not say anything to you. The Ansaru are in charge of this road. And if they spot any uh, armed bandit, you, you know, let me use, you know, the word. Although, you know, any planning bandits they saw along that road, they chase them away. So they are in charge of that road. Presently, I'm talking to you. That is how that road is. And that road is more secured than Kaduna to Bernungwari, because the Ansaru were in charge of that Bernungwari Pulpua route. And that is why you have them, they are very, very prominent. They are very prominent in Bernungwari area, in the eastern part of Bernungwari, and some part of Giwa local government, notably in six ward of Giwa local government, notably Kidandan, Galadimawa, Katage, Yakawada, and to some extent, Panghoya. These are the places that you find this Ansaru. And also you have the bandits on the other side who are on the forest uh, of uh, UAC forest, let, where they have their farms. Let me get this right, uh, Mr. Abdurraouf. So you're saying that Ansaru, which is a terrorist group, am I right? Yes. So you're saying that one, they are in charge, two, they're providing security for the communities such that they are now the ones fighting against the bandits. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Are, are the people okay with this? Do they like this arrangement? Well, the people, you know, are taking it. It's just like uh, a kind of, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a situation whereby you, this one is a devil. You prefer a devil than also, you know, to have, you know, somebody that will come and, uh, uh, you know, uh, molest you or even uh, take over, you know, your community. This Ansaru present, as I'm telling you, is very, very prominent. Everybody who follow that road will feel secured, but the locals there, they are being indoctrinated into this kind of ideology of this splinter group. So that is what is happening in the whole of eastern part of Berlingwari, from Maganda, as I said, to Old Birnungwari, to Uyalo, to Dogwandawa, to Kazage, and also Kutebeshi. Therefore, you go to Idesu Ward in Kiwa local government area, 
and also some part of uh, the Aikidandan world, you find all these, uh, you know, terrorists, uh, you know, there. And the people feel more secure to be with those uh, terrorists and Saru than with the bandits. The Fulani man is a global or an African person. He moves from the Gambia, from, from Senegal, and his nationality is just a Fulani man. And uh, as a person, I may have my relations in the Cameroon, but they are also Fulani men. I have relations because from the maternal side, I'm a Fulani man. And that is why we want to educate people. A Fulani Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again.